Hello, I'm Ryan Black with the Page Waterman Gallery. Today I'm going to be doing something that doesn't come natural to most artists, myself included, which is to talk about my own work. I love talking about art, especially painting. Movements, periods, and inspirations in an artist's life, and the bodies of work they develop, and specifically how they call back to other artists, mediums, and their own previous work, really excites me and I love learning and connecting those dots. But, to turn that eye back at yourself is breaking a bit of a cardinal rule, and I relate it to explaining a joke, which you only have to do if it isn't funny. Hopefully it's all there on the canvas, but maybe I can supply a little insight into how and why I've been working on this latest group of paintings. They may seem disconnected at first, but hopefully I can remedy that. I'll be focusing on three paintings, all completed in the last few weeks. Every year, for a few weeks in spring, the magnolias completely change the color palette in Boston's Back Bay, and painters have been capturing that fleeting beauty for decades. Personally, I've always been drawn to transitions of color, like sunrises and sunsets, for that same reason, because they happen so quickly, and like a still-life painting of perishable fruits and flowers, it is about immortalizing something that is dramatic and beautiful, but gone very quickly. Here and in all my recent paintings, the subject and even the composition are secondary to the balance of color harmonies and vibrancies and how they, along with value, convey form and distance. The vibrancy is all in the foreground with the discord color yellow contrasting the analogous purple and blue harmonies in the shadows and in the distance. Even the varying thickness and rhythms in the application of paint and brushwork is meant to draw this contrast. The goal is not to create the illusion of depth or forms, but to communicate them in an interesting, aesthetic way. Like Van Gogh and several other painters, I find Japanese woodblock prints to be a great source of inspiration on how to convey these ideas. Speaking of woodblock prints and interesting ways of communicating form and depth, here's a very atmospheric piece that presented a unique challenge for me. I'm not sure how true it is for other artists, but a lot of my work is about experimentation. I know a lot of painters that develop a formula and perfect it over time, but I'm not one of them. For me, learning and creating new ideas and keeping things fresh and exciting is a big part of the joy I get from painting. For instance, taking a typical scene with a single point perspective and grid-like design that comes with all those imposing vertical lines in a downtown cityscape and trying to dissolve those forms and depth into something interesting that doesn't just attempt to look photographic seemed like a fun project. This was late winter and I witnessed this great color change as the sun went down behind a veil of clouds and heavy rain. What I ended up attempting was a painting with very little fluctuations in value and just let the vibrations of broken color put down in a uniform chatter communicate the scene and the dense opaque atmosphere. This one's a smaller piece, 11 by 14, of the public garden with the sun going down and the light hitting the underside of the maple that hangs over the pond. Admittedly, this is an attempt at a prettier painting than I am usually inspired to create. I'm a big fan of beauty for beauty's sake, don't get me wrong, but there are already so many capable painters out there who are creating great works in that field. No, for me this was about those cool pink and blue pastels of spring and how they recede to a milky gray distance when you get that hard, warm light hitting the underside of the leaves in the foreground. I really enjoyed the little curls and dappled impasto paint that made the leaves stand up on the surface of the linen. This is also a subject that continuously pops up in a lot of my work, which is the relief of nature set in and surrounded by industrial cityscapes. I never want to shy away from showing modern life, but I also don't want my paintings to feel dated and hope to portray a range of timelessness. Hope this adds to the enjoyment of these paintings and doesn't dissuade you from looking for your own meaning in these works, as you might have equally as valuable insights in them. All of these paintings and many others are available through the Page Waterman Gallery in Wellesley.